Today, I'm going to show you how to make a cheese sauce that goes great over broccoli, potatoes, or tater tots, and a Philly cheese steak. So stay tuned because this recipe is up next. Here's our secret ingredient, Velveeta cheese. It is a processed cheese that tastes like American and I like to keep it stored because it has a six month shelf life. So anytime I'm in the mood for a nice cheese topping over taters, broccoli, or that Philly cheesesteak I demonstrated, I can just pull this out of the cupboard and go to work. As you can see, it comes in one solid brick, but not solid per se. If you look here, it's soft to the touch, and that ensures a lump-free cheese sauce. Like butter wrappers, it has measurements here on the side so you can cut out the proper weight. And as the package reads, we got 32 ounces, so we've got two pounds. We'll just cut in half and cut in half again. That'll give us a one cup portion to work with. But we'll just continue cutting this into cubes. This is important because if you try to melt this down from a large portion, it's going to burn and that flavor will spread through the entire sauce and ruin it. So trust me, and continue to cut it into small cubes like I'm doing here. Something like this is perfect. Now in a saucepan over high heat on the stove, I'm going to add half and half. I'm going to add some blackened seasoning, some dried scallions, and some dried parsley. Quickly whisk that together, Wait for it to boil, and then quickly add, but carefully, the Velveeta cheese cubes. And as soon as they're all in, it's important to get this stirring immediately. And you want to babysit this the entire time, assuring that that cheese isn't sticking to the bottom. This is a good time to turn down the heat. And once the cheese is melted and all the ingredients have fused together, you're going to remove it from the heat. And as it cools down, you might get that thin layer of skin across the top, the same layer that soup gets. Don't worry about it, just whisk it in. It will thicken as it cools, and you can pour it right over your favorite dish. If you like this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And in case you didn't know, the classic Philly cheese steaks in Philadelphia do use processed cheese. Cheese Whiz. And I dare say, this is better. And there you have it. Cheese sauce, right here in the Poor Man's Gourmet Kitchen. Thank you for watching, and be sure to stop by PoorMan'sGourmetKitchen.com for more recipes and exact ingredients. To get this recipe started, we'll be using tomato paste and tomato sauce. Also, these other ingredients, starting with Italian seasoning, oregano, black pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, and some brown sugar. First thing we'll start is with our sauces. We'll combine the tomato sauce and the paste. Give that a quick whisk. Now we'll add our other ingredients, starting with the garlic powder, then our onion powder, our black pepper, our oregano, the Italian seasoning, and the brown sugar. And again, we'll whisk this right up. Once you got it combined like this, it's a good time to give it a little taste. Make sure it's exactly the way you want it. Once it looks like this, give it a few minutes on the stove so those flavors can really fuse together. And then you can separate it in a separate bowl or dish. And there you have it. Pizza sauce right here in the Poor Man's Gourmet Kitchen. Thank you for watching and be sure to stop by PoorMan'sGourmetKitchen.com for more recipes and exact ingredients. Start this recipe with some ketchup dump in the entire bottle. Now we're going to need a bottle of hoisin sauce. Again, I'm dumping in the entire bottle. Now you're going to need some plum sauce. Once again, 
the entire bottle is going in the bowl. Now you're going to add some sugar and this will help sweeten it up. Now a little bit of five spice powder and some baking soda. Now just mix these ingredients together until it's creamy and smooth like this. And there you have it. Chinese barbecue sauce right here in the Poor Man's Gourmet Kitchen. Thank you for watching and be sure to stop by poormansgourmetkitchen.com for more recipes and exact ingredients. For this recipe, you're going to need a good cocktail sauce. And the truth is, a real basic recipe is just ketchup and horseradish. You really don't have to get all fancy with this. But if you have it, it's not a bad idea to add a squeeze of lemon juice as well. But if you really feel like you just got to trick it up, go ahead and add some chili sauce, some Worcestershire, and some hot sauce. And once you get all those ingredients mixed up and you're convinced to taste the way you want it to taste, go ahead and set some of that aside for the shrimp cocktail. Now for oyster shots we want to add some tequila and a squeeze of lime to the rest of that sauce. So instead of making a Bloody Mary style cocktail sauce, which would take vodka, we're going to make a Bloody Rita style sauce, hence the tequila and lime, which is excellent. And there you have it, shrimp cocktail and oyster shots right here in the Poor Man's Gourmet Kitchen. Thank you for watching and be sure to stop by poormansgourmetkitchen.com for more recipes and exact ingredients. First thing you want to do is chop some pickle, green onion, and some capers. And you can do that in a food processor or by hand if you prefer. The important thing is, is that they get cut up into tiny little pieces. Now here I've got some mayonnaise and it might surprise you that my next secret ingredient is sour cream. Then you want to come in with some dry ingredients starting with garlic powder, some onion powder, some Worcestershire sauce, dill, and of course horseradish. Now all you gotta do is add our previously chopped ingredients to the mix and get this stirred thoroughly. Now at this point it's important to go ahead and give it a good taste. This way you'll know how much salt and pepper to add. But it's also important to realize that this is one of those sauces that needs to marinate and set up in your refrigerator overnight. So make sure that you realize when you give it a quick taste once again that it will reach its full potential and potency after the marinade in the fridge. Then you'll be ready to serve with your favorite fish fry. And there you have it. Tartar sauce right here in the Poor Man's Gourmet Kitchen. Thank you for watching and be sure to stop by poormansgourmetkitchen.com for more recipes and exact ingredients.